It has begun! podcast bringing you well-known and significant members of the mortal kombat community i am your host the mortal kombat phantom and with me as always is my co-host our lore master yanni welcome yanni thank you phantom and today we'd like to welcome back our returning guest and friend jeremy adams welcome back hello thank you for having me <laughs> jeremy welcome back thank you for rejoining yeah, us I'm yeah, so excited. No, with my nifty shirt i love, love my realm cast shirt this is amazing <laughs> i got that fits packet. you well yeah no it's great it's great, it's great. <laughs> really happy to see you wearing it. Glad you like it. Yeah. So for those of our listeners who don't realize, Jeremy's been on previously where we sat down and talked about Scorpion's Revenge um, and the, the first Mortal Kombat Legends movie. So now, you know, we've had you on back then and we've had a lot of different things that have happened since then. But today we're basically right. going to be focusing on uh, Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms and, of course, the new upcoming movie Snowblind. That's right. Well, I'm excited okay. to be here. All of which you've written. So yes, yeah, yes. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, well, I, I think I even mentioned last time, it was like, because I'm incessantly talking about martial arts in some capacity at in and around Warner Brothers, that the moment they had said, hey, we want you to do, you know, more like we need to do Mortal Kombat. Everybody was like, well, that crazy person that just constantly talking about fighting, let's get him on it. And so, <laughs> that was definitely it. And it was, you know, and we talked about this last time. It was, a, it was kind of a, a, a strange thing because I knew with Scorpion's Revenge and Battle of the Rounds, we knew we were going to get two chances at it, and that was kind of it. And um, with Scorpion's Revenge, originally the original take that it was going to be just from the POV of Scorpion, you know, and um, that got modified during notes and rewrites and stuff like that. Uh, because of some of the people involved uh, wanted it to be more about, hey, the tournament or whatever. And then with the second movie, with Battle of the Realms, was much more difficult because um, there was a big want to really dive into some of the crazier aspects of the mythology of uh, Mortal Kombat. Mm. And I like if I would say there was a weakness, it was like, oh, we put too much in there. I mean, yeah, we cut out like 40 minutes. Gosh. And there was like a whole subplot with uh, Melina and like these clones and no all way. This other stuff. Yeah, like we we recorded it. At, I think it was even boarded. It was just like it was just too long. Yeah. And so I, that's why I feel like sometimes it's like, oh yeah, the one being you know <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> it just got it just got so big and so crazy. Even even to me, like if I'm looking at it, kind of with a critical eye, even though I don't, I don't necessarily like to do that because these are super collaborative. There's super people, a lot of people involved. I turn in a script and two years later, I get to watch the animation and Rick, who's our producer um, is constantly, I think it's a joke now is that my audio commentaries are oftentimes the first time I see the movie. Um, <laughs> and, and so like Rick is like, Oh, oh, watch this. And I'm like, I'm trying to watch the show, but like give audio commentary for people watching it or listening to it that want to hear something interesting. But I'm like, oh my gosh, look at his head. It just exploded <laughs> like a watermelon, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but Battle of the Realms is interesting because, uh, you know, we wanted to take a lot of those aspects. We deviated from some, but, you know, again, on the video game, you're sitting there talking about something. The end outcome also depends on who wins, you know, who you win with. Mm -hmm. on, in yeah. certain versions or even take for like katana for instance i'm rambling by the way uh you yeah, know there's worry. versions where it's like you know she doesn't know that she uh is shao khan's uh not her daughter her daughter his daughter mm -hmm. and then there's versions mm -hmm. yeah. where she's like been enchanted yeah and forgotten yes. things and so it's like and and it, what's crazy is i remember dominic over at nether realm and said like, listen, man, the fans are going to be really intense about this. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I, I apologize. On <laughs> oh, I worked on Supernatural. Let's go. And then I was like, oh, yeah, okay. All right, that's a different level, you know, yeah. <laughs> a different level. But, but it, it's hard, too, because, like I said, uh, you know, it's a much 
like Mortal Kombat in itself is a, is a strange pastiche of all these things, right? Mm-hmm. And and yet at the cornerstone of it is like characters being killed and mutilated, you know? So <laughs> at what point do you make the decision like who are you going to kill? Mm-hmm. You know, yes. who are you going to end? And each one of those people have rabid fan bases, you know? And how are you going to bring the character? Like, I don't even think, I don't think I wrote, I tell you things that bother me, like, uh, you know, Kung Lao and Katana kissing or whatever. I was like, not Kung Lao, uh, uh, yeah, you know, Liu Kang uh, and Katana kissing. I was like, animation kissing is gross. Like, it doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'd much rather it just be like a handhold or something. You know? <laughs> okay. No, hold on a second. So you said earlier uh, that basically Battle of the Realms was supposed to be the end of the series. Is that right? Yeah. And so and you that did was... indicate that on the first episode with us, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we knew that the, I, we deviated because we didn't want Liu Kang to win the first one. We mm-hmm. wanted to be able to hint that he had a greater destiny and that was going to be the Battle of the Realms and it was going to be this winner take all. And so we l- literally thought we've got two movies and we don't want to just rehash like the first movie, just make it a basic. We wanted to up the stakes, and we have the show con and the and like the winner take all. And we and I wanted to bring some you know the humanity of and this has happened before. Is just you can see elements of like so many games that we just yanked into this one game. Whether it's Raiden becoming mortal, or uh, you know, like I said, the one being or. Uh, you know, you have Quan Chi and that whole subplot because there was this, there was a huge part of the the Temple of Elements was much bigger. Yeah. And, okay, um, I thought I thought so. All right, yeah, there was. I mean, there was like all the elements, and um, oh. we had the whole you know Scorpion being chased and uh, with Ermac. You know, all that stuff was a little little with long. Ermac long. too. Yeah. <laughs> pretty sure but it's been it's been so long um and some of the stuff just gets winnowed down like literally i turned in such mm. a huge draft and rick rick and i are so enthusiastic about stuff it's like yeah yeah it's fine it's fine and the next thing i know i'm like we've had to cut quite a bit <laughs> and i'm like no <laughs> uh like it, it, while they're while they're at the tournament they like sneak out that was the thing johnny there's a whole scene where johnny is like I don't know if he's trying to find flowers or something. It was something really silly. Bill <laughs> McHale was like really funny about it. And they sneak out and they end up finding this clone farm. Um, and, this, oh. that, and, and there's this huge battle. And, and at the end of that movie, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but whatever. Uh, at the end of that movie, there was going to be, um, we were going to hint at something, but we really, really did think that was it. We were going to get to, um, two movies and that's it. And then those movies did uh, really well in terms of sales and I think streaming. Yes. And uh, despite despite anger over Battle of the Realms. <laughs> um, and then I got a call and it was like, listen, this did really well. We want to do more Mortal Kombat, we, but we want to we want to do something different. Mm-hmm. And I sent them like six different uh, ideas. Ooh. And um, and uh, they were crazy, you know. And then uh, Snowblind was the one that we really got excited for. And Rick, who has produced the other two, and in in, um, in animation, producers, depending on who they are, like what producer, what level of producer, supervising producer, especially, um, they're more like the director, like the the idea of like film director. So Rick really has mm-hmm. a specific hand in in everything from beginning to end in, in animated uh, movies. And, but the, the director director also directs a storyboard. So there's, it's interesting because you get a director title and you're thinking, Oh, it's Ethan. And Ethan obviously does a ton of work, but they're a very close knit team. Mm -hmm. And so Snowblind is directed by Rick as well as produced by Rick. So he really vibed on it and he thought this is something that he really wanted to pour a lot of his attention in. And, um, and it's crazy and it's it's really crazy and a lot of obscure characters that we got to use and um uh, <laughs> what? yeah i mean listen it's 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 a different moral comp it's a different it's a different story but it's not different i mean that's the thing yeah. it's not like it's like i just extrapolated from something so 
that's the only that's actually one thing i wanted to mention so you were saying at the start how you know there's all these different bits of lore and some of in in some cases for example katana you said katana uh, knows about king jared in some instances in some instances she's enchanted etc but what i could definitely see and this is something i am always very positive about uh when terms of well you're writing um we can clearly see that you do your research and you try to get your stuff in there even yeah. like, okay, we're going to address like the elephant in the room in the sense that, yes, there was some negative feedback or a lot of negative feedback, specifically, in my opinion, towards the latter 20 minutes of the movie. And sure. you've already addressed that by just telling us that, well, there was a lot more that was cut. And that was the yeah. biggest criticism, actually, that it was yeah. rushed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wish it was. I mean, it, you know, a lot of the animated movies are, it's such a, it's, it's such a tight budget. It's such a tight thing. Like you and I as fans can sit there and go like, I would watch X, you know, whatever it was, but they do the calculation. This is funny. It's the same thing in comic books too. They do the calculation on like, how many DVDs can I sell or how many comic books can I sell? And the difference between successful and unsuccessful is so small. And that's Mm -hmm. why, you know, um, a lot of creators like me, we're not, we're not yelling at people to like, hey, don't pirate this because we just don't want you to pirate it. It's because (laughs) it could be a thousand. It could just be a thousand units that determine whether we can do another one or not Mm -hmm. do another one. It's that slim. It's so small. And and it's just like uh, the big thing, like in Warner Brothers, especially in superheroes, it's like, why is it always Batman? Why is it always Batman? Why do you guys only make Batman? It's the only thing that sells to the level that they can get the budget to make the thing. And so every time that they try to make something else, it's like, well, we'll try it this time. <laughs> and they do it. And they're like, oh, didn't work. You know, not mm. not. I mean, I think it works. It just doesn't work to the level that they want to give them confidence to say, hey, uh, you know, we, we want to do more of these. And we see that all the time in in live action movies. Right. It's like. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna do Batman, Batman, uh, you know, but then suddenly, or or Superman, it's like suddenly they do an X-Men movie and suddenly it's like X-Men, you know, or <laughs> or nobody thought Iron Man was gonna work. No one did. Like, and it was like yeah. Iron Man came out and everybody's like, holy cow, this is the greatest thing ever. You know? <laughs> uh, and so so you like I really encourage people, like, if they want to explore that universe more, especially Mortal Kombat in a way. Listen, the reason there's a live action Mortal Kombat 2 is because gobs of people watched live action Mortal Kombat 1 and they have the metrics for that. Um, So good for them. (laughs) (laughs) I want to do those. Uh, uh, Like about that. um, I mean, we clearly would love a longer sort of runtime, as we were saying, you know, we're fans. We, we'd obviously yeah. like that that not rushed version, or rather that not cut version might be a better way of saying it. Now, yeah. would, is there ever any possibility of the full version being released? Because you no. mentioned it was fully animated, but no. No, no it wasn't no animated. It was storyboard, and I think they recorded ah. the audio. But by the, 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 so between there, usually what happens, they'll record the, um, they'll record the voice actors first, and then they'll mm-hmm. go into the storyboard phase. And then from there, they can go, oh, is this going to be long or is this not going to be long? So they're going to have to cut down because then the animation part is the expensive long part, right? Hmm. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, I, you know, who knows what happens in the future? Because what I would love to see is even if, even if they couldn't animate it, uh, you know, I had hoped, hey, maybe on the DVD, you should just put the storyboard sections with the exactly, audio. Exactly. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That would be sick. But I, but I don't know in terms of the deal that they make with the actors in uh, voice. I don't know the deals. So it's like, well, uh, can you do that and not pay them? Or do you have to pay them? Like, you know, there's yeah. all these weird backend deals that you just don't know about. And I don't know about because I'm so low on the totem pole. But um, but yeah, there was some, I'm trying to think some other stuff that was cut out. Yeah, the, the ending of Battle of the Rounds became this like Godzilla fest. And yeah, we were taking mm-hmm. stuff from like, you know, some of the finishing moves of like Luke Kang turning into a dragon, like, okay, we're going to do the one being we're going to, and you know, <laughs> you know, we were like, I don't know, you know, is this going to work? And I, I think, <laughs> it, I think if it, it had more time to mm-hmm. gestate when Luke Kang becomes like super Saiyan, like, you know, uh-huh. just goes, yeah, yeah. like we called it a Kaiju battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's really what it was. And it's like, if we were able to, I feel like if there's more room, 
and there was more room to kind of feel the threat of, of what Quan Chi was doing a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, there's like three movies in there. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You know, we were like, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. because that was a thing too that I wasn't even aware of until I started writing mm-hmm. and getting into Scorpion's Revenge. It was like, um, you know, I was going to fan sites and YouTube channels and stuff, and I had played the game um, mm-hmm. uh, very early on, first couple, you know, games, especially at the arcade or whatever. And then to see, and then talking to Dominic and Ed about like where it had gone in terms of like mythology was insane. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it was built, it was built up, and it was so crazy because really when they made that game, and it's like once a generation there's this thing, and it's like this is really successful. We got to figure out a loophole to get us back into the thing. <laughs> yeah. And so they start building that mythology. And I think they did a really, really unique and interesting ways of doing it. But holy moly, there was a lot. So, yeah, you know, Battle of the Realms in a way was also, if you think about all the other adaptations of Mortal Kombat, I don't think anybody's talked about the weird stuff that we did in terms of one being and like, you know, Elder Gods, like all of that stuff was on the table in that thing. It we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, no, I get you. Yeah. Movies and it's just like, it's really a lot. That's so. honestly that's a huge positive to us. I know that there's this negative spin, as we've mentioned, with regards to the ending, which yeah. was clearly as a result of being rushed. Uh, and honestly, I, I'd actually just, just, just rewatched it again now. Yeah, <laughs> and um, it was literally like the last 19 minutes where mm-hmm. you can tell there was this rush. You had this the perfect setup from Quan Chi and Scorpion's Revenge, moving into right. Shinnok's story with the one being trying to bring back all the Kami Dogu, and that honestly. The moment we saw, I remember Phantom and my reactions to the trailer of Battle of the Realms, and we saw that the Kamidogu were even mentioned, and it looked authentic, (laughs) like proper traditional MK Kamidogu, not uh, the new take on them. We were so happy. The one being was asked, too. We saw that in the casting call, and we're like, wait, what? Like, yeah, we're so excited for it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, and something else I I loved about Battle of the Realms was that you basically did mortal, like, you know, I, I think we talked about it on our last episode too. Is that uh, where Mortal Kombat Two goes with this tournament? Like how they managed to mm-hmm. find that loophole, right. like you said, and that's what you did. And I was like, as soon as I started watching the movie, I was like, yes, we're doing Mortal Kombat Two storyline where Shao Kahn shows up and basically rechallenges everybody and keeps this tournament going on. And I, and I was super excited for it. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's things like that that I, I we appreciate about Battle of the Realms and the fact that you're writing on this is that you get to sprinkle in all these bits and pieces of lore that we love. Try, yeah. Try that. Well, originally we were going to originally have a bunch of shorts that led up to, um, uh, because there was going to be night wolf and like, you know, there's this whole, I had this written this whole thing with a striker. Like, I, I think it was like taking out his trash and like everything starts blowing up and, and he goes, John, Wick <laughs> on everybody. And I was like, oh, this would be really cool to have Striker like going John Wick on everybody and Nightwolf all in it. <laughs> and then just a lot of that stuff had to go, I had to go to the wayside, unfortunately. But, um, you know, it's fun yeah. to have Kung Lao. It was fun to have, you know, uh, it just, just some of the, in, I mean, listen, it's, some of it's insane. And, and we, we lucked out with like Joel McHale with Johnny Cage, which I still think is perfect. And, um, he was great. Oh yeah. That's he's the such, voice of Johnny Cage. Yeah. He's hysterical. Yeah. And he won't, he won't stop improving too, like, you know, <laughs> in the room. So it's like, I'll write and he'll call me out. I'll, I'll like write a piece of dialogue. Like, mm, I don't know. I've heard that in a lot of movies, dude, you know? And I'm like, ugh. You know, and then he'll improv it and he'll do something. And then it's like, okay, Joe, let's move on. No, he was totally invested, which is fantastic. Did you have any uh, other big pieces that were cut out of the movie? Uh, I mean, you've you've mentioned there's like 45 minutes or so. And, you know, the hour, the the movie's on an hour, 20 minute run. I know. I mean, it's not that long of a movie. So you're you're talking about almost doubling doubling the time. I mean, like Mm -hmm. I said, there was more of the subplot. There was more of, uh, you know the action at the end um i'm trying to remember because i feel like it's really about space it's really about giving like sub-zero space to become sub-zero in a way and and giving him space to also recognize that this insanity i mean that's another piece of the lore like 
like I said, like multiple movies. It's like, oh, his clan's turned into these robot cyborgs. You know, like uh, all this stuff has happened. Smoke mm. and and but it's about just giving it a little more space because I feel like if it was spaced out a little more, even mm. even Raiden dying, uh, you know, somebody somebody tweeted at me and they're really upset that Raiden died. I was like, did you watch the end? Because he's not dead. Like right. that's not, <laughs> you know, he's he's dead in the Marvel comic sense of dead, which means mm-hmm. give it a minute, you know. Um, uh, but I'm trying to think what else. It's well, like, I'd, I mean, I'd love to focus on what you just mentioned, actually. Sorry, uh, because you you mentioned everything that I, I did want to talk about. You you brought in the Lin Kuei. You brought in the cyberization process. Right. You brought in, well, Raiden's death, etc. All of this took place uh, in just this one movie. And yeah. <laughs> all of that, are per, per, like, I don't think it's bad. I think that was great because you had so many different facets. And that's one of the things about Mortal Kombat, which we love. It's the sense that all the characters with their own individual lore come together to make this full sort of lore right. to the Mortal Kombat uh, universe, right. right? And I'm actually curious because, you, I mean, w- this is sort of moving into Snowblind ter- territory and I would love okay. to hear about possible other content. But I'm curious as to whether or not the whole thing with Kwai Liang and Smoke is actually followed up. I mean, obviously you can't tell us too much, but at the end of Battle of the Realms, if I remember correctly, we have Cyrax and Sector being torn apart, but mm-hmm. I don't remember Smoke uh, unless I maybe looked at my phone for half a second when that happened. No, but I, seeing as they're best friends, I right. would assume there would be some sort of callback to uh, Verbata in, in the upcoming Snowblind. Interesting. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, that's that's. Oh man, how do I? Uh, <laughs> I mean that. If this is a, oh man, like I don't know if you know Gary, Gary Mariana, the head of PR at Warner Brothers. I got shot through a window. <laughs> I say something wrong. I mean, you'll have to wait and find out. I think Snowblind Fair. is a different animal in a in a way. Um, that tells some of the other stories, you know, whether it's Kenshi, uh, obviously, you know, he's prominent on the cover, he's prominent in the preview, but I don't mm-hmm. necessarily think that's the totality of that, that movie. And, um, you okay. know, you, you see this kind of like wasteland Mad Maxi thing going on, uh, with Kano and stuff, which I I don't think it's everything it appears to be in a way. Mm. Oh, that's the okay. best hint, hint I can give you. I will tell you that it's extremely violent. <laughs> I will tell you <laughs> that, that uh, during the audio commentary in the last third of the movie, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> people are sick in the head. And it's always, it's always that feeling like I'll write some really gruesome stuff, but then I'll see it like, it was like, you know, animated. But worse than that, the animation guys, Rick has really let them, you know, in all these movies just said, listen, this is probably the only time you're ever going to be able to let loose like this because you're <laughs> going to probably be stuck in like my little pony land or something. So if you really want to blow up somebody's eyeball, this is the time. Like, you know, like really <laughs> extreme violence, <laughs> you know? So what was this process like in, in shifting over from your Battle of the Realms universe that you'd created and being so focused on the tournament and stuff like that to, as you mentioned, like the Mad Max style and Snowblind. Like how, how did you feel right? In I that think we got a little more freedom to not feel like we needed to cram everything into one move. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it was like, we could tell a succinct story. Mm-hmm. Um, like if I was able to separate battle of the realms, I would be like, Hey, maybe coming Daga would be one movie, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. yes. those, the, the scorpion and the sub zero, that aspect of it. And then maybe, you know, the Shao Kahn tournament, uh, you know, the whole implications of Adenia, you know, all that stuff would uh, be its own movie. Because I also, I have said this before, I think that story, um, the kind of story of how Shao Kahn came to power and all that stuff, or even like I, I wanted to do, um, uh, Oh my gosh, uh, Shang Tsung, like his origin story, I think is fascinating, especially if you've yeah. ever seen that that uh, those pictures of him looking like a member of Kiss. 
that you're like, oh man, this is awesome. Like this, this version, <laughs> this origin story of this character that becomes evil in a way, or well, use is kind of evil, but you know, uh, is interesting. And the great Kung Lao and all that stuff happening in the past. I think that's really, that's catnip for me. Um, mm. With Snowblind, I feel like we got a chance to kind of recognize what had happened before. And because of the success of before, we got a little more freedom within it. Because I think Ed mm-hmm. Boone and Dominic, um, I think they were really appreciative that we tried to, we really we really cared about the mythology and we cared about all the the writers that have gone before and everything that had gone into Mortal Kombat before. So it wasn't us trying to like reimagine it really. Uh, it was us trying to take the bits that they had made and put it in there. Like we didn't make any big, you know, everything that's in there is kind of in there in the game in some capacity generally, and yes. we mash it together or whatever. But we really tried to stay true to what had happened in the games. I mean, that listen, I know there's a fan already typing an angry response. I am just saying <laughs> that we only had two movies to talk about, like ten films worth of mythology, and kind yeah. of you know put it together and and try yeah. to hopefully make somebody that's never doesn't know anything beyond Mortal Kombat's tur- first tournament go. What is all this stuff? I'm going to go look it up and then maybe, you know, gravitate to more of the other uh, uh, media surrounding it. But with Snowblind, um, I think, like I said, I, I feel like Ed and Dominic were also very like, oh, these guys get it. They understand what we're doing. They survived, you know, anger and uh, and love or whatever. <laughs> and so they were kind of on board with it and they were giving mm-hmm you know, great notes. And, and, um, we work pretty closely with them. We always did, um, to just, just make something that is unique. I I don't know how people respond to any of these things. So I'm hoping that people will go in, watch it from beginning to end before they start firing off angers, (laughs) anger, anger words toward me. (laughs) Well, that's the thing. You have to give a chance to it. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you can't just spout anger without knowing what it's about and without having actually checked it out. Yeah. That's, and that's and honestly, <laughs> and once you go through the process of making a movie in any, any form or television or comic book or whatever, you realize mm-hmm. the fact that anything comes out is a miracle unto itself. So you will never <laughs> see me ever criticize anything because the worst thing I can watch, I went, at least they did it. At least it <laughs> happened. Uh, it, I mean, I know that it almost sounds flip, but having worked in the industry now for quite a bit of time, I can't tell you how many projects never made it, how many projects mm. I've written that yeah. are, that I've been paid for that are sitting on the shelf that have never come to be. And that's just the the name of the game. Over. Do we have a, a, another uh, Battle of the Realms moment in Snowblind? Like, I'm, I'm presuming we don't because you had time to actually plan this one out and get it the way you want. It, we're not going to have like, that compressed many cut 10 minutes cut sort of yeah. content again, maybe no, uh, there is one little thing that had to be cut for time. I'm telling Rick now any script or movie <laughs> we do together, I'm just turning in like really low pages because, <laughs> because it, it becomes a function of, uh, especially with these movies, they want to write bigger fight scenes and action scenes. Totally understandable. Mm. Uh, but those take up minutes, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but the the thing that was cut, not that I'm telling you what it is now, uh, but we'll come, we'll come back on after, maybe I'll talk about, uh, is more of, it's not that consequential. Mm, and cool. this one is much, is, is paced very differently. And it's, it's, it's much more um, serious in approach, I think. And, uh, and it gave us a chance, like I said, to explore some characters in a way and some mythology in a way that, that we, I mean, we've all seen some of it before, but this is seeing it in a narrative form is more of an, something that we haven't seen, you know, Mm -hmm. like Kenshi, have we seen him and his story played out in animation or live action? I don't think we ever have. The closest we ever got was Legacy, right. uh, live action. Right. And he got a couple of episodes yeah. or something, less right. even. Right. So, and that was, yeah. That, 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 yeah. So it, anyways, it's like trying to, but again, 
you know, it's funny what a cut scene in a video game implies and what people think it should imply, yeah. you know, it, and it's like, no, this is how it happened. And it's like, <laughs> I watched the cut scene. Like, it's very small. There is very <laughs> few d- details in that cut scene. <laughs> well, I mean, can yeah, I just say, I can I just say, I'm so glad to hear you saying this. Honestly, I, I know I've said this before, but you clearly do your research. You clearly go through whatever you can. And I, I, we honestly appreciate that, regardless of the criticism, which will come in some form. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, the nature of the beast, man. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> we really do appreciate that. And we've mentioned, actually, even from just watching the trailer for Snowblind, the, we, we, we sort of analyzed it. And yeah. this is firstly is something that we've been really looking forward to for a very long time in the sense that it's not tournament focused. It's very standalone. Yeah, this right. is the kind of stuff that makes Mortal Kombat, in my opinion, where you get to focus on specific characters and a little, a sort of, well, character driven plot line rather than an overarching tournament plot, because right. then you're not rushing everything. Right. But I'm very curious, how did you get a project approved without Scorpion being the focus? <laughs> <laughs> uh well luckily we had already focused on scorpion so it made it a lot easier yes. <laughs> <laughs> i mean at some point i'll I'll tell you the story about how getting uh ta- like figuring out what to do next uh happened mm. but it's really funny and it's really funny how um the things that i pitched and the things that they said no to and the things they were excited about is 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 really interesting to me um but still very excited to hear that actually that'd be very no, cool to hear <laughs> no blind was um it was such a it was such a layup in terms of we knew when we mentioned it and what we wanted it to be it to us it was just kind of a a clever use of mythology that had happened whether or not anybody thinks it's clever it, but you will get characters you recognize. You will get extreme violence. You will get a telling of a tale, and you see it in the in the in the trailer. You see the well. You see the sword. Mm-hmm. You see, you know, it, it's it's very focused on Kenshi, but I wouldn't say he's the complete focus of this movie, which mm-hmm. is interesting mm-hmm. because it's obviously snow blind. Call the Phantom. You know, <laughs> there's, there's a big piece of this that has to do with obviously there's there's a bit from our last uh analysis episode where i'm telling phantom i don't think it's just gonna be kenshi focus and i say snow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Called> it. <laughs> but it's fun because uh you know as we were putting it together and and this kind of like version of the narrative and like there's some characters that just fit slotted in aaron black obviously just like oh yeah of course that character has to be in this and Mm-hmm. Um, some lesser known characters and some black dragon characters and stuff like that, that it's like, Oh, this will be perfect. You know? Um, so I'm really curious what people think about it, but and we're only, well, we're only like a month and a half away. Really? Well, uh, okay. You're mentioning the lesser known characters. I, the moment they came up in the trailer, I was like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy. Like, I know Cobra has this this right. reputation, Kira with the whole blood rain thing as well, and then I mean no face. Uh, this 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 is where I see the fact that you have been doing your research. <laughs> forget forget for one second that you have Kira and you have Cobra coming back in and Tremor, Tremor, yeah. everybody's favorite rock boy. So forget them for one second. You brought no face back. That you you I I feel sorry for you for the fact that you actually went back all the way to special forces and <laughs> dug up no face. <laughs> uh, you know, it, part of it's Rick and me just trying to like, we're, what are the cannon fodder? What are the people that we could use? You know, how many, <laughs> how many, how many in, in like, why make up another character? Uh-huh. Yeah. Why, you know what I mean? Like there's just so many characters in Mortal <laughs> Kombat, you know, when mocap shows up, then you really know, <laughs> I got. I am like. I'm sitting there at the bottom, just like, yeah, let's do it. You know. Uh, but uh, it's it's one of those things where they have so many cool characters and just be able to put them in, and fans, like I said, real extreme fans are going to be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, versus somebody like my wife who's just like, just tell me when it, the blood's over, you know. <laughs> so you know, you, you got 
uh, Kira and Cobra, who have had these huge design changes, what was kind of your concept to involve all these different people into this Mad Max-esque world? Like, like the characters that you've chosen, the ones that we've been talking about. Like, was there anything that kind of helped you pull these particular characters into this story? Mm. Oh, mm. that's that's gonna be no. I, 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 I just have to be careful. Um, some of them are relational to Black Dragon. Some other things. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if okay. I can say anything more. Let other me ask you her, this then. You know, yeah, go ahead. King Kano. Uh, I mean, we talked about oh. in Scorpius Revenge when, <laughs> when Kano died. And it, died. You, yeah, you said you said at that time, <laughs> you know, nobody's ever truly dead in Mortal Kombat. And we were like, oh, OK, OK. So what was the inspiration of bringing Kano back in this form? Uh, was it just you wanted to use that character again or is this going to tie into the plot significantly? It's going to tie into the plot. Cool. Ooh, OK. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's going to tie in the plot. So you, yeah, it, it, <laughs> I, think, I think I think that aspect and that aspect in the script. Obviously, the the people that watch the trailer know about King Kango. But if you watch, even the way they did it in the trailer, I had written it as kind. Of, we re- wrote it as kind of a surprise because hmm. it's really about you know like Shang Tsung is like, you know, you think it's him, you think that's the guy. That's the bad guy. He's always the bad guy. And then suddenly it's King Kano. And you're like, what is going on? Oh, yeah. And yeah. it was an indication of the audience to be like, I don't know what's happening right now. Right. You know, even fans of Mortal Kombat are not entirely sure what's what is happening. This isn't the way it's supposed to be necessarily. <laughs> and hopefully we answer that to a satisfaction by the end of it, because obviously there's some subplots and some other stuff going on. Uh, you see the well, you you know, if you know Ken, she's bio you know who's involved in it and tricking him and all Mm -hmm. that stuff so it's like what is this king kano stuff and (laughs) um yeah that that sort of brings me to a question i had in the sense that we know kenshi's story we know the background to kenshi and how he lost his sight with the well etc etc but one character who is quite um, integral to kenshi's original story in some fashion which with a very interesting sort of uh, method of being involved, Ermac. Now, this question is not regarding whether or not Ermac is in there. We haven't seen him in the trailer, and I know you can't really tell us if he's in. But are there other Mortal Kombat characters in this movie that have not been that have not appeared in the trailer? Yes. OK. Well, all right. That's really good to hear. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, just following along with that question, then, Kenji, <laughs> yeah, you've, <go> you've <laughs> taken a very what I would say, I here, but also... reaction. Go ahead. What? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I, I know I'm asking the right question if you got that reaction, so I'm happy. <laughs> uh, but Kenshi is, well, as you said, um, accurate to his origin story. However, he is quite young in this compared mm-hmm. to his sort of original um, iteration where he actually got involved with Kai Liang. So, what was the idea behind making Kenshi? Well, young, and then having this sort of old man Logan take on Kwai Liang. Uh, oh, I, mean, <laughs> I think it's uh, integral to the plot in terms of, you know, you'll see. You know, I mean, it's it's again, it is. It's all part of the story in a way, mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. not it's not entirely, you know, it's not going to be perfect continuity with the video game okay and uh and so so yeah you're gonna have to watch because it it (laughs) and and knowing what you know in terms of like hey listen i you know i've tried to do deep dive on mortal Kombat. i've tried to make it make sense within mortal Kombat in in terms of like it's all that for a reason it's all that there are reasons all this is happening in this movie. So I think that'll be really interesting for everybody to watch. (laughs) (laughs) It's so, it's so weird. I feel like I'm like a, like a murder mystery or something. You're like, Oh, (laughs) you know, and, and all I know is um, like I said, I think it's paced beautifully. The music's really good and um, you know, incredibly violent. And, 
and just it hits a lot of story notes and things that happen and some surprises that happen. And it's I, I'm very excited for people to watch it. As are we, clearly. <laughs> One part of the trailer that we kind of broke apart and really deep dived into is, uh, you know, there's a scene with Sub-Zero uh, and uh, there's several Lin Kuei members that are kind of getting murdered along with him. We see yeah. these zombie like creatures. Are those can you say are yes. those revenants or zombies or are you not allowed to tell us yet? I can't tell you, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but I think you're, I think, I think you're getting, I think you're in the same, uh, you know, so we'll say. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> then there is one little observation we had because we put a lot of focus on tremor. We are so happy to see tremor return, but yeah. one thing that we did think that we noticed uh, was that Tremor himself didn't actually seem to be working with the Black Dragon. He never appeared in the same scenes or areas as them. It looked sort of like he was doing his own thing, which would very much tie into his sort of game lore in the sense that he's, what's the word, turned on Kano. Are we... You'll have to wait for that. Uh, you'll have to wait for that. I, I don't. Again, I think the Kano of it is a huge linchpin to the story, and I think that, um, and the fact that it's not playing out like we we've seen in in other movies or television or game stuff. I mean, we have, but you have to go digging. So uh, uh, you know, the fact that it's not it doesn't line up perfectly in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But you'll you'll understand fairly. By half the movie, you'll understand something else is happening. Oh, um, cool. All so right. that uh, hopefully that'll be an interesting surprise and just keep you going because you know you'll be rage watching for a while probably. <laughs> like, this isn't how it's supposed to. <laughs> you know, this isn't how it's supposed to go. You know, and then and then and then, and then you'll be like ah, ah, and then and then to me, uh, by the end of the movie, I'll be like. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, like, uh, <laughs> uh, technically, you know, I'll be the one going like, technically, I'm right. <laughs> you know, so. All right. Be, I'm curious. Did you have any concepts from Battle of the Realms that carried over into what you're doing with Snowblind? Like anything that, you know, some ideas that got cut, perhaps, that you've kind of tied into the story or reused? No, not really. Uh, uh, no, it's kind of solely, solely moved away from that. Um you know, we we had so, some of the stuff that got cut in Battle of the Realms. We were stuff that we were going to hint at taking taking that storyline a little further, but um, that got cut, mm. and um, and so we 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 decided with this we could we can move in a different direction a little bit, and depending on people like it, then you know maybe that's the direction they'll keep going, and hopefully they'll let me keep doing it. Yeah, because I need to feed my kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. Well, I, th I think the temptation when you come to Mortal Kombat, I think the temptation is I'm going to do my own thing. This is too complicated. Okay. And or, rightly or wrongly, maybe that's right. I don't know. That's not the way that I approached it. It's not the way Rick approached it. It's not the way the other people approached it. Hmm. Like we really tried to embrace the universe. And if we overdid it, we overdid it. But you can see it from from what I've done, what Rick's done, what the storyboard guys have done, what the directors have done, little just hints and Easter eggs beyond everything I've written. They've put Easter eggs in different different locations. And and if you're a person of a certain age that's grown up with Mortal Kombat, it's like you're just in love with it. So why why try to change it? Why try to change the mythology? I mean, it's all there. It just needs mm -hmm. to be, you know, put out and illustrated in a way that people can accept it and listen to it well mentioning you know possible continuing with the legends series you did say earlier that you had a few different scripts and such and that leads me to two questions one are you planning on possibly using any of those scripts in the future and two would snowblind actually set us up for one of those scripts or a new story or does it close its own chapter uh, I mean, I would love to do more," said Jeremy, uh, with a straight face. 
And um, I think it, I think what this movie does is it does close off the story, but it hints at something um, that would allow us to do other stories. Hmm. Okay, cool. So, I mean, once, once you recognize what happens at the end of the story and then, Oh yeah, that, that's it. Boy, I almost stepped off a cliff on that one. <laughs> so, so, yeah. You know, you, we, we, on our previous episode, we asked you who your favorite Mortal Kombat character was since you've begun writing legends. Has that changed at all? Or is it, do you still got your favorite? It's so hard. Cause, um, I don't even remember what I said last time. I don't remember exactly. Uh, honestly, I think it was Scorpion, wasn't it? it might, maybe it was Scorpion. Hmm. So, was it? I mean, so oh, what happens was, is when I'm I think writing it, was Liu, it, Liu Kang. Was it? Yeah, because you right wanted to tell us because when story. I was writing it, like when I was writing, uh, you know, when I'm getting into Scorpion's story and his family and being in hell, like I was just like, oh my gosh, I love this character. This is a rich character. The idea that somebody will do whatever he can you know, it, in kind of revenge. And I, I love that, that kind of, that mm-hmm. kind of hit me, uh, in this sub zero story is really kind of interesting to me. Uh, Kenshi story is really kind of interesting to me, but, um, I also having Joel McHale, like voice Johnny cage, it's such catnip for a writer that <laughs> you just want to keep, you just want to keep like writing stuff for him. So Johnny Cage is really, really fun to me. You know who I actually, um, I really kind of like too. And it, it's like, I, man, I, I, all these characters have a lot of really great uh, bios to them because I know that, I don't know how many people like Sonya Blade, but um, there is an aspect of Sonya Blade that I really enjoy. And that is uh, being a woman in a man's world and being mm-hmm. a badass and like building that up to a point where, how do you become so insulated in the fact that everybody around you tells you you can't or whatever. It's very Rocky, right? Like mm-hmm. it's like, Oh yeah. And you kind of have to insulate your emotions and become this badass and everything. And then you have this goofball guy that's like totally, you know, falling in love with you. And it's like, how do you, how do you open up in a way? I, there's something very like character driven that I really like about that. Um, but on the, on the pure genre level it, there, the scorpion of it is really cool to me. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I vacillate. I vacillate on, depends on who I'm writing about too, you know? Yeah. So how about any favorite moments from Battle of the Realms or actually, if you'd like, even Snowblind, if you want to share a teaser with us? <laughs> no way. No way. Uh, Cheeky question. I had to try. No, <laughs> Uh, Battle of the Realms to me, when Raiden dies and he's about to say "I love you" and he gets his, he gets killed, is mm. uh, I think is really uh, important for for the character Liu Kang, especially because mm-hmm. you know we start the cold open with essentially this guy was ra- not raised but had this kind of guardian angel in a way that had yeah. been with him and by de facto through the the clan, you know, the White Lotus like helped him grow to be this thing like as a parent when i look at my daughters and i just i see and i feel like they have this great destiny in front of them and my oldest telling me how she's not good at this or she doesn't live up to an expectation she thinks i have and really my expectation is be happy and healthy and whatever uh, but also be a good person and Mm -hmm. and i value that more than anything um, even though that may be hard so the idea that even Raiden holds these feelings as a God for this mortal and is willing to give up his Godhood in order to help him reach that destiny. That to me is really powerful. And him going to say it and then uh, is yeah. like the gut punch that I'm like, Oh man, that's brutal. Uh, but we all know what he meant and that's kind yeah. of the catalyst for him. Are there any particular characters that you haven't been able to write yet? Uh, you know, in the Legends universes that you would like to focus on? But see, if I say it, then you'll know they're not in mm, Snowblind. I almost gotcha. See, I love your, I love your <laughs> creepy Vulcan chess move. I, <laughs> like I said, mocap. 
and take it to the bank, baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. How about a, a more fair question in the sense that rather than focusing on a specific character that you'd like to bring to the Legends universe, how about any focus on any specific realms? Because we did see sort of the realms merging in Battle of the Realms, but we didn't actually get to see outside right. of, say, the Nether Realm uh, world, uh, uh, Earth Realm. Right. I mean, I've said Adenia, right? Like, I mean, that's been mm -hmm. that's been one the history of that, the kind of like Game of Thrones of that would be super cool. Like, mm -hmm. if you did a Game of Thrones version of how that all came to be, mm -hmm. um, I think that would be really interesting. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's cool. That, that would be cool, actually. So, All right, you got any last questions before I get? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, we have a million questions, but I, I just, I know that we're going to get shot down on some of these. So, <laughs> as long as you know, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I guess at this point, before we let you go, you know, kind of a twist on our usual question that we ask. We usually ask you what's your favorite finisher, but do you have a favorite finisher from Snowblind or from Battle of the Realms that you like to share with us? Battle of the Realms focus. Don't try and trick him again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, okay, so for me, I, I think even when I wrote it, like um, uh, when Jax rips off the arms, um, mm -hmm. I think I had even... Who did he rip off the arms? He, uh, Katara. Katara, yeah. I even wanted it to be um, uh, another of the race that ripped off his arms. And I can't even think okay. of the life of me. Shiva, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought, oh, that was supposed to be the revenge moment. That was supposed to be the moment where like, ha, ha, ha. And then suddenly he did it. And I, mm. and the note was like, I think he ripped off his arms and in the script, like beat him with them or something. And they were like, no, you can't do that. It's too violent. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, have you watched? I mean, I've, we've had this conversation a couple of times in Nether Realm where I'm like, have you watched your game? Like, you guys make this a thousand percent more violent and a thousand percent more gruesome and funny, you know, in the way that they, they did it. I will say that when I was researching the stuff for Kenshi, and I, I loved Kenshi's like telekinetic sword finishers were really yes. rad, really rad. Like the spinning, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so, this is so terrible. <laughs> like, I, mean, I mean, half the time I watch, I watch these finishers like from the game and I'm just like, whoa, you guys are so sick. And I know if I go to Chicago and ever meet these guys, they're going to be buttoned up like nice little like mow the lawn on Saturday, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and meanwhile, Monday through Friday, they're just like, look at this vessel explode, you know, or it's so, crazy, <laughs> so dark well jeremy thank you so much uh yeah. would you mind reminding our listeners where they can find you online yes uh space kicker uh either on uh, instagram or twitter generally twitter is where i i i live most of my life instagram has pictures of kids and other things but <laughs> but mostly on twitter uh you can find me there and and find all the pertinent information but i really appreciate everybody that's been uh supportive of the animated Mortal Kombat universe. And I know we all are. And despite its ups and downs. Uh, so <laughs> thank you guys. Jeremy Adams, thank you so much for returning to the Robecast and joining us on this episode. It's been great catching up and we are looking forward to Snowblind. So thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners for stopping by the Realmcast today. You can find Yanni and myself, Phantom, on the Mortal Kombat group on Facebook as well as Yanni on the Mortal Kombat Meme Realm, which is now also on Instagram. You can also join our official Discord channel hosted on Mortal Kombat Online server through the link in the description, where we discuss Mortal Kombat along with our listeners. Special thanks to Uppercut Editions for their continued support. The Realmcast is the official podcast of Mortal Kombat Online. And you can catch up on all episodes of The Realmcast on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, Spotify, and MortalKombatOnline.com. Thank you. Thank you.